Hi everyone. This video will cover a review of Unit 3, which is forces. Forces can be defined as anything that changes the energy of an object. So forces change the energy of an object. Okay, they also change the motion of an object. They change the motion, we'll say motion and energy of an object. Okay, now you can't study forces without studying the um, three laws that Isaac Newton put forward. Okay, we call these Newton's three laws. And Newton's first law of motion is called the law of inertia. And it basically states, and you've heard this expression before, that objects at rest tend to stay at rest. And objects in motion stay in motion. And maybe you haven't heard about this part. This is the more advanced part. Unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. Okay, so if something is at rest, it's not gonna move unless you apply an unbalanced force. Even if you apply a balanced force, it will not move. For example, if I have a box on a surface, on a table, whatever, and I apply two forces, one in this direction, three newtons, with a strength of three newtons, and one in the opposite direction with a strength of three newtons. These are balanced forces. The box will not move. Um, if I exert a second force to the right of two newtons, then my overall force here is two newtons to the right. The box will move to the right. Okay, so that's what we mean by unbalanced forces. So that is also called the law of inertia. The same thing is true for motion. If something is moving, the only way you can change its motion is to apply an unbalanced force. So you might be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, what about a ball? A ball that's rolling on a surface, here's the surface, here's the ball, and it's sort of just rolling in this direction. If, if you don't touch it, if you leave it alone, it will stop on its own. So, so that's a change in motion. What's making it stop? The thing that's making it stop is a force um, that's being exerted by the surface onto the ball um, as it makes contact with the surface and that's called frictional force. Friction is a type of force that acts in the opposite direction of something that's moving. Okay, it's always in the opposite direction of, mo of movement. Okay, Newton's second law Uh, let's see, Newton's second law is uh, the relationship between mass and acceleration. And it basically says that force, F force, is equal to the mass of an object times the acceleration of that object, okay? Um, now, when we're talking about this force here, we're talking about the net force. And by net force, I mean the sum of all forces. And when you sum up forces, you have to take their direction into consideration. If we go back and look at the example from above, box on a surface, you have a three Newton force this way, and a three Newton force this way, 
the net force on this is zero, right? Net force is zero because the direction of the force has to be taken into account. So if two forces are in opposite directions, they will subtract. And if they're in the same direction, they will add. Okay, Newton's third law Newton's third law is the um, action reaction. We call this the action reaction law. And you've heard this expression before, I'm sure as well. Uh, and it says that for every action, there is an equal and opposite, meaning in the opposite direction, reaction force, okay? So several examples that are given to you in your curriculum. Um, one is uh, when you swim and you push against the, the wall of the pool, um, your legs exert a force on the wall and the wall also exerts a force back on your legs, right? So um, if, he, if this is the wall here and you're swimming and you exert a force in this direction, right? The wall will exert a force equal and in the opposite direction. If the wall didn't exert an equal and opposite force, then your legs would go right through the wall, okay? Uh, another example is a tennis racket, a tennis ball hitting a tennis racket, right? So here's, here's your tennis racket and you have the ball hitting the tennis racket. When the ball hits the tennis racket, the ball exerts a force on the tennis racket and the tennis racket exerts an equal and opposite force on the ball. And that's what makes it spring back. Sitting in a chair, if you happen to be sitting in a chair right now, Newton's third law is acting on you. You are exerting a force on the chair, um, but the chair is also exerting an equal and opposite force back on you. If it didn't, you would fall through your chair. Okay, so that's another example of Newton's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Okay? Um, next, you learned about electric fields. Electric fields are what we call a type of non-contact force. Non-contact force. The forces that we had been talking about, like friction um, or a push force, when you push against the pool wall, those are all what we call contact forces. Two surfaces have to be in contact with each other for the force to be exerted. Here, we have what's called a non-contact force, okay? So these forces are exerted across space without touching, all right? So exerted without touching. Now, um, charges exert um, or have an electrical field, which then exerts an electrical force. Um, if you have a positive charge, the electric field lines will point away from the positive charge. Electric field lines always point away from positive charges. If you have a negative charge, the electric field lines will always point towards the negative charge electric field lines will point towards the negative charge. Now, if you have charges kind of in proximity to each other, near each other, they will exert a force, okay? So for example, if I have this positive and negative charge near each other, um, I will notice that the electric field lines come out. Now let's say I have it near a negative charge they come out 
of the positive charge and then they go in to the negative charge. Okay, So there is a force of attraction. There is a force of attraction between the positive and negative charge. That is an electrical force. Okay, that's an electric force. Um, this so this would be electric force of attraction. Now, if I had two of the same charges, if I had two like charges, for example, if I had two positive charges near each other, what I would see is electric field lines going out of both of the charges, but I would also see that the electric field lines want to move away from the other charge. So you'll notice that right here in the middle, you have no electric field, okay? Because there is a repelling force. So this is an electric force of repulsion. Repulsion. Um, all like charges will experience this force, a force of repulsion, and all um, opposite charges will experience a force of attraction, okay? Then you looked at magnetic fields and Magnetic fields are also non-contact, just like electric fields. And they are closely related to electric forces, okay? They exhibit attraction and repulsion just like the electric charges that we looked at, except this time we're looking at the poles of a magnet. Okay, if I had a magnet that had a north end and a south end, I would have magnetic field lines going into the south end and out of the north end, okay? So magnetic field lines come out of the north end and go into the south end, like so out of the north into the south, okay? If I put two magnets together with their like poles, two magnets together with their like poles, like so, so I have here a, whoops, north and south, and I put another magnet here near it that has south and north. Oh, I should make this right. Right? What you'll see is that the south end will have field lines going towards it on both magnets. And what you'll notice is there will be no field right here in the middle, okay? So these, this is a magnetic force of repulsion. Magnetic force of repulsion. Um, if I were to re inverse one of those magnets and put them north to south, so if I had a magnet that had north, south, and I put another magnet close by that had north and south, the north and the south would attract each other. So it would, the lines would come um, out of the north and go into the south. Out of the north, into the south. Out of the north, into the south, right? 
so they would continue to move out of the north into the south build lines and what you'll get here is this very strong magnetic field right here in the middle okay so this is a magnetic field of attraction or magnetic force of attraction So those are different kinds of non-contact forces. Um, there is next, uh, you learned about this law of gravitation. This is what we call Newton's law of gravitation or the universal law of gravitation. Um, gravity is also another non-contact force. So gravity is a non-contact force. And the amount of gravitational force varies, varies um, depending on mass and distance of the objects. Um, so this universal law of gravitation determines how much force exists between two objects. Okay, determines how much force exists between two objects. Um, the universal law of gravitation states that every object in the universe is attracted to every other object in the universe. Like, you're attracted to the water bottle that's in front of you. You're attracted to the computer you're sitting in front of. Those are all objects that have mass and therefore they have a gravitational field, which means that they have, um, they attract other things. Now, obviously you can notice that, that there's no attraction, gravitational attraction between you and your computer that you can tell. It is, it's on a very, very small scale. The more massive an object is, the greater its gravitation will be and the greater the universal gravitational force between those objects will be. So if we're talking about planet size objects, then the gravity between objects will become more obvious. Okay. Um, so we said that the um, attraction between two objects depends on their mass and their um, distance that that separates them so let me just draw uh, some scenarios this was in your curriculum but I'm just going to draw it redraw it here anyway so let's say you have two objects each are two kilograms okay and they have a distance between them of five meters and then let's say you have another object that is each five kilograms and they have a short distance between them one meter the question is which one of these would have a greater um, gravitational force between them well obviously the one with the more mass that is always going to be more gravity and the closer objects are to each other the greater the gravitational force between them Okay, so since the five kilogram masses, number one, are more massive than the two kilogram and they're closer to each other, they have greater gravitation. What if now I introduced a third scenario where I have two kilograms and I had these at one meter apart. So if we were to rank these from highest to lowest force of gravity, this would have, the five kilogram would have the highest gravity between it, okay? Then this would be the second highest because they are closer than the five meter apart, and this would be last. So this would have the least amount of, um, gravitational force between them okay so that's universal gravitation okay momentum and collisions 
So here are some things you learned about momentum. Momentum has the equation P equals MV, mass times velocity. That's how you find the momentum of an object. You multiply the mass by its velocity. Um, direction does matter. So uh, when you get into, for example, conservation of momentum, conservation of momentum, just like um, matter and energy, momentum has to be conserved. Conservation of momentum says that your initial momentum, P initial, your initial momentum has to equal your final momentum. Okay? Um, so however many objects you may have in the beginning, let's say you are running towards your friend who's running towards you. You both have mass and velocity, so you both have momentum. You're gonna add those up and that's gonna be your initial momentum. And let's say in the final scenario, you and your friend are hugging um, and you're both stopped. So the combination of your mass and velocity and your friend's mass and velocity will be your final momentum. Um, so you can use the idea of conservation of momentum to solve for things like how fast is your friend running or how fast are you running? Solve different kinds of um, momentum problems. Your curriculum uses the example of a, uh, a figure skater spinning. And in the beginning, when she's spinning, she has her arms spread out wide, right? So she has a long distance to the center of rotation which is the center of her body. And so if you have a, a long distance, if you have mass out away from your center of rotation or your axis of rotation, then um, you're gonna spin slower. So your angular momentum is conserved. Um, and so if you, if you put your mass out farther, and in, in other words, increase the distance to the center as you spin, then you're gonna spin slower. As the figure skater brings her arms closer in, right, she hugs her arms or brings them overhead, she spins much faster because angular momentum is conserved, okay? Um, so because now the distance to the center of rotation is very little because her arms are tucked in, she's going to spin faster to conserve angular momentum. Okay, and angular momentum is just the describes uh, how the movement of a rotating object can change. Okay, so this we can write the definition describes how movement of a rotating object can change. Okay. Um, I'll go back to this momentum and collisions. You gotta practice the calculations for these, okay? Practice doing problems here. Um, and then if you have trouble or if you get stuck, you can always log into my Zoom office hours. Just email me first and let me know and then you can always log in and we can work through a couple of problems together, okay?